Hola amigos, and I'm back. Yes, so finally we settled here in France. Uh, we have a studio and now we are ready to start shooting more videos. And well, uh, first of all, thank you so much to all of you, to all the subscribers, to all the people writing comments, writing in the web, uh, Facebook page and just just keeping up with me, thank you so much. I have not forgotten you. Uh, I just been really busy with all the moving and you know, just crossing the big ocean just to be here. So it takes a while to settle and you know, for, I'm also working. So it's not so, so easy, but finally we're here. So we are ready. Uh, today we have a grammar video, yes. So it's not going to be boring. So don't do that face oh grammar video. No, 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 this is going to be fun. We are going to learn about the verb tener, to have, tener. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to see the present, the past and the future. Uh, we are also going to see the imperative and the participle. We're going to see the uh, imperative and the participle. Uh, so, okay, so let's start. Um, yo tengo, that means I have. Yo tengo, tú tienes, usted tiene, él tiene, ella tiene, nosotros tenemos, Vosotros tenéis, ustedes tienen, ellos tienen, ellas tienen. Okay, so here we're saying I have, you have, she has, he has, uh, we have. Okay, so we're just conjugating the verb to have in the present. Okay, I'm going to go one more time and remember, you see how usted El y ella, the third person of the singular, you have the same uh, ending, tiene. And this, the third person of the plural, usted, ellos y ellas, have uh, the, well, the second and third person of the plural have the same ending, tienen. Okay, so it's easier. You have to remember fewer. One more time. Yo tengo, tú tienes. Usted tiene, él tiene, ella tiene, nosotros tenemos, vosotros tenéis, ustedes tienen, ellos tienen, ellas tienen. Ok, now we're going to see the past, the past which is the pre pretérito simple. It's the simple past. Remember, in Spanish, we have many tenses, but we're just going to see the basic ones, okay? Uh, again, ver the verb tener, el verbo tener is irregular, so you will see how it changes so much. And in the past, it changes a lot. So, yes, hang on. <laughs> well, just keep on watching the video, repeat after me, memorize it, just learn it by heart and it's going to be easier. Okay, so let's go with the past. Yo tuve, tú tuviste, usted tuvo, él tuvo, ella tuvo, nosotros tuvimos, vosotros tuvisteis, Eh, ustedes tuvieron, ellos tuvieron, ellas tuvieron. Now, if you know, if you notice in Spanish, there is not a difference between B and V. Sometimes we pronounce a softer B, like V, V, but it's not necessarily just when it's the V that we pronounce V. Sometimes the B have the V sound. Well, that's just a little tip on pronunciation. So, okay, one more time. Let's go in the past. Yo tuve, tú tu tuviste, 
usted tuvo, él tuvo, ella tuvo, nosotros tuvimos, vosotros tuvisteis, ustedes tuvieron, ellos tuvieron, ellas tuvieron. Ok. Uh, now we're going to see the future and you will see the future is very simple because you have the root T, E, N, D, R is the same and only the ending changes. So it's much easier. So let's start. Yo tendré, tú tendrás, usted tendrá, ella tendrá. Él tendrá, nosotros tendremos, vosotros tendréis, ustedes tendrán, ellos tendrán, ellas tendrán. Okay, one more time. Yo tendré, tú tendrás, usted tendrá. Nosotros tendremos, vosotros tendréis, ustedes tendrán, ellos tendrán, ellas tendrán. So, simple. The future is much easier. Now, we are going to have few examples. Oh, I'm sorry. Before that, we're going to talk about the imperative. Imperative is when you tell somebody to do something. Uh, for example... Uh, hey, have some coffee. Have some coffee. You're telling somebody to do something. Have some coffee. Have patience. Um, just it's an order. I mean, a kind order. But it's imperative. In Spanish, it will be ten, tenga, o tengamos. Por ejemplo, ten... Cuidado, That's, that translates, be careful. So in Spanish, it's like saying, have care. The, the way to say, be careful, is like, have care, which translates, ten cuidado. Ten cuidado, no toques eso. Be careful, don't touch that. Okay, I told that to my kids a lot. <laughs> um, okay, uh, now that is with... Tú, tú, ten cuidado. Now, if remember, we have formal and informal. If you don't know the person, you're not going to say, hey, ten cuidado. You say, tenga cuidado, which is usted. Usted tenga cuidado. Tenga cuidado, por favor. Tenga cuidado. Ahora, if it's, now, if it's all of us, that, well, we have to do something. We have to be careful. So, ten, tengamos cuidado, tengamos cuidado, let's be careful, okay? Uh, and now the uh, participio pasado, which is the past participle, like you will say, I have had fun, or I have had um, a good time, yo he tenido. So the participle of tener is tenido. Okay, and that's a little bit more advanced grammar. We will see that later on, I promise. But for now, I just wanted to introduce that. Now, the fun part. Let's have some examples. Um, as I said in the video before, we use the verb tener a lot. And we use it to, in ways that are very different from English. For example, to express the well-being or mental well-being or the state of mind or physical. For example, you will say, tengo frío. Instead of, the, the translation is, I have cold. In English, you say, I am cold. But in Spanish, you say, I have cold. Yo tengo frío. Now, one of my questions in Facebook, somebody, I'm um, sorry, in YouTube, somebody wrote me a question um, asking, can I say, estoy frío? And the answer is, yes, you can say it, but it has a different meaning. 
When you use the verb to be, it has a different meaning. For example, if you say, um, estoy frío, estoy frío, that could be more like, is something abnormal? Uh, for example, the environment is warm, it's summer in Texas, 42 degrees outside, and you say, estoy frío. That probably indicates that you might be sick. Something is wrong. Estoy frío. And if you say, soy frío, that talks more about your personality. I'm a cold person. Soy frío. I'm a cold person. Now, with calor, you say, tengo calor. Tengo calor. And if you say, in this case, estoy caliente, yeah, don't laugh. That means something else, completely different, but also could mean like you have a fever. Oh, oh, I don't feel good. I think I have a fever. I'm hot. Oh, no me siento bien. Creo que tengo una fiebre. Creo que tengo fiebre. Estoy caliente. So, yes, in that sense, it means something else. Not necessarily what you're thinking, which you shouldn't be saying that. It's safer, it's safer if you say, tengo frío, tengo calor, tengo hambre, o no solamente, not only in the first person, not only in, in la primera persona. You can say also, ella tiene frío, nosotros tenemos hambre, so you just conjugate the verb normally and then you will express the feeling. For example, el niño tiene miedo. Él tiene miedo. Um, las mujeres en la mesa de allá tienen hambre. Ellas tienen hambre. Okay? Okay, now... Uh, we have um, be careful, we already saw be careful, ten cuidado, uh, tener frío, tener calor. Now, there is one that is very important, very, is tener ganas de, tener ganas de. That means to feel like doing something. So if you want to say, oh, I feel like going on vacation. I feel like eating some ice cream. In Spanish, you are not going to use the verb sentir, which is the verb to feel. You use the verb to have, for, but in a phrase. It has to be tener ganas de. Yo tengo ganas de comer helado. I feel like eating some ice cream. I feel like eating some ice cream. Yo tengo ganas de comer helado. Uh, another phrase. Oh, ella tiene ganas de ver una película. She feels like, go, like watching a movie. Ella tiene ganas de ver una película. Ella tiene ganas de ver una película. She feels like watching a movie, okay? Um, now, we can do it in another tense. Um, let's say in present, but in a negative way. Yo no tengo ganas. Yo no tengo ganas. You can say, yo no tengo ganas de trabajar. Es lunes. Quiero lasaña. Soy Garfield. <laughs> A joke. <laughs> so you say, I don't feel like working. It's Monday. I want lasagna. I'm Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> so you say, uh, I don't feel like working um, because it is Monday. Yo no tengo ganas de trabajar porque es lunes. So feel like doing something, it will be tener ganas de. Tengo ganas. Yo tengo ganas de enseñarles a ustedes español. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, I hope this is useful. 
I hope this helps. Remember, subscribe, write comments. I started already little by little, start replying to the um, comments. Uh, also visit us in Facebook. I have some tips on uh, grammar and other things. So please don't forget to visit us in Facebook and subscribe and thank you so much for all those likes and thumbs up and all those comments. Okay, guys, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.